Hey there, I am Alan Gratz, the author of Allies, coming to you from a very rainy Asheville, North Carolina on February 5th, World Read Aloud Day 2020. And I thought for today, for World Read Aloud Day, I would read the first few pages of Allies, my latest book. Here we go. <clears throat> a hunting we will go. D. Carpenter's foot slipped off the wet ladder and his stomach lurched into his throat. He scrabbled for a handhold, but the weight of his pack and his rifle dragged him down. At the same instant, a gap opened up between the huge transport ship he was leaving and the little motorboat he was supposed to be climbing into. Dee dropped like a stone toward the cold black water of the English Channel. A hand shot out and caught the pack on Dee's back. Dee jolted, then swung into the side of the ship with a thump. Grab on, his friend Sid Jacobstein yelled. With shaking, frozen hands, Dee fumbled until he was clinging to the side of the ladder. Legs up, Sid told him. Dee pulled his feet up in time to keep them from getting crushed as the motorboat drifted back to clang against the side of the transport ship. Dee took a deep breath and closed his eyes in, re in relief. For crying out loud, Dee, you just about killed yourself before the Germans could do it for you, Sid said. Sid had been right below Dee on the ladder, and now they were face to face. With his free hand, Dee grabbed Sid's shoulder. Thanks, Sid, he said, still panting. I owe you one. Private Carpenter, Private Jacob Stein, you two knuckleheads are done fooling around. We got a boat to load, Sergeant Taylor called from above. Dee and Sid helped each other climb into the small boat. They took their places halfway back in a row of other soldiers wearing olive green assault jackets and green metal helmets. Though they wore the same uniform, Dee and Sid couldn't have resembled each other less. Dee was 16 and looked even younger. He had spindly arms and legs, and he worried that his baggy green army trousers made him look like a child playing soldier. Sid was just a year older, but he was six feet four inches tall and built like Hank Greenberg, the big power-hitting left fielder for the Detroit Tigers. He could have bent Dee into a pretzel if he'd wanted to. Sid had a long face, curly brown hair, tan skin, and stubble on his jaw. Dee was blonde-haired and pale-skinned, and he couldn't grow a mustache if his life depended on it. What at first united them was their shared hatred of the New York Yankees. Sid was a diehard Brooklyn Dodgers fan, while Dee rooted for his hometown baseball team, the Philadelphia Athletics. The Dodgers will be back in the World Series as soon as the war is over. You'll see, Sid said to Dee, Sid said to Dee continuing a conversation that had begun on the troop transport ship. Of course, they had an offseason last year. Half the team enlisted to fight. Another soldier overheard him. Are you kidding? He said. His New York accent was even stronger than Sid's. The Yankees lost as many players, including Joe DiMaggio, and they won the pennant and the World Series. How Sid or any of the rest of them could think about baseball right now, could think about anything besides their impending doom, astounded D. He staggered on the metal deck as the boat rocked from side to side on the waves, and Sid steadied him to keep him from falling. They were in one of the famous Higgins boats that Dee had heard about, but it wasn't much to look at. It was basically a big metal bathtub with a motor at the back and a tall door at the front. But Dee knew that its flat bottom was what made the boat special. It allowed the boat to run right up onto the beach, drop the front door, deliver its 40 passengers, then back out, reload, and make another run. It was this Higgins boat that would deliver Dee and Sid and the rest of their platoon to Omaha Beach in Normandy, France. The Allied invasion of Europe was about to begin. If you want to find out what happens next, keep reading Allies. Happy World Reading Aloud Day 2020, everybody. Talk to you again soon.